Welcome to the Thin Blue Line Outdoors Podcast. This pig came bottling. Just ended up puking last night. It sucked. <laughs> Whoa. Ah! We got it. We wrap it in tin foil. <laughs> Throw it over the fire. <laughs> 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 All right, everyone, this is the Thin Blue Lion Outdoors Podcast, episode 46, Woo! and everyone, it's deer season, finally. Yeah, baby! Deer season is finally here. Uh, as you can see, Ryan and I are pretty excited about it. Um, we have spent all day hunting. This is October 1st as we're recording this. Uh, we've been out for the most part all day, um, and it's been a good day. Um... I'm going to sum up mine first because mine was uh, pretty lackluster until at first, and except for a certain part. That's a few encounters. I had a few encounters, which, hey, I'm happy. It's October 1st. I get it. Um, I am just happy to be out here, and I knew I was going to have a good time doing it, and I did. Uh, I hunted a uh, what they call the pipe stand here, and I saw... I don't know if it was a little forky or a six point. Um, I think it was a six point. Um, we were super far away, but, you know, hey, a deer's a deer. Uh, I was happy to see that. And then, uh, just fast forward later tonight, uh, Ryan and I were hunting together, and he saw a biggin and a doe. We were pretty sure with the doe, right? Yeah, I saw the doe first, mm-hmm. and then you got back into mm-hmm. line out of the whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. Like a, a big eight, so. yeah, and because there was a plan, we had a plan. I was gonna shoot a doe if I get a chance, he's gonna shoot a buck, and we'll cover why we had that plan going forward. And the reason that you know, for the most part, sums up my day, other than a couple other things I may have helped Ryan with, which brings me to Ryan the red coat. Ryan, how was your October 1st hunt? Unbelievable. Thin Blue Line Outdoors coming to you live from the live outdoors. It was a really good start. It was unbelievable, if I'm honest with you. Um, Long story short, 45 minutes into the new season, there's a doe on the ground. Uh, Nice size doe, probably about two years old, I'd say, and boom, probably agree with that. Um, Great story, you know, great footage. I think the only letdown from it is what I've explained to to Boom. Uh, Cameras were set up nicely. I caught the first six and a half minutes of the action. uh, And then about five seconds before I pulled the trigger, she just left uh, the camera. So didn't get that overall final shot. Uh, but I got everything else from all other perspectives. So she probably came in about 80 yards. I mean, no, 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 no. Let me start again. She was probably, from the first time I've seen her, 60, 65 yards to my left. Uh, she came in pretty quick uh, and, and didn't really allow me to make any moves or changes. Uh, I was super slow with my movements, but every time I moved, she sort of caught a glimpse or caught a smell. Or something we had to stare off for for a good 30 seconds or so she's stomping her feet at me uh, and in the end she decided she had enough and she sort of ran down the hill with and ended up about 35 40 yards uh, with trees and brush uh, and i think a biggest mistake and for some unknown reason she comes right back up and tempts fate <laughs> walks past the red coat like thinking this guy's from England, he doesn't know how to hunt us, us white tail. She comes back, uh, 20 yards exactly. Uh, aim small, miss small is, is what was going through my head. Uh, just before I took the shot, I, I mean, the cross here was tight just behind that front leg. Uh, it's a, she, you know, she takes off like a bullet from a gun. So I watched her for the first 70 yards and I definitely seen her run 70 yards and then at that point there was too much tree and brush and I sort of lost her. But I knew which way she was going. So again, being the good ethical hunter that I am and have become, uh, give it about, what was it, about an hour and 45 minutes? Oh yeah, um, I knew it was going to 
kill him. But uh, uh, yeah, he texted me. I don't know. You probably texted your group around seven twenty, seven twenty-five, something like that. Said, uh, you know, think you got to do. Um, obviously, Jesse and I were super pumped for you. And we, Ryan and I already talked about with or he got a doe or I got a doe or any deer, whoever got a deer. The other person was going to hunt until about 9 o'clock and then come uh, come meet up and that's what we did. Yeah, and that was, uh, again, it's hard sitting there in the stands, you know, but uh, first and foremost, you know, I, I want to boom. It's his first time out here and uh, he's been good to us, so I wanted him to get uh, at least an opportunity to sit there for a while. That was the first, second thing, ethical hunter. Allow the deer to expire before jumping down, chasing it. Last thing you want to be doing is pushing and jumping uh, a wounded animal. Uh, so give them that space and time to expire accordingly. You know, so I just sat there, you know, keeping in mind though, I still had a buck tag in my mm -hmm. pocket, still had a turkey tag in my pocket. So I was still hunting after I stopped shaking. But, <laughs> uh, and then I think that. I met up with Boom, and, and that was when we started mm -hmm. tracking. Yeah, so one thing to go off that, Ryan kind of alluded the, to it on um, the beginning of the podcast. We're obviously not in the studio as we do this. Um, we're still on the farm in a tent. Uh, as you can probably tell from the lighting, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, and you can hear the background noise of the crickets and all that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, we are in the field. Uh, but, yeah. I met up with Ryan shortly after nine, um, and we found blood immediately. Yep, and immediately. And so, I this was the vibe. Tell me if I was wrong here, Ryan. The vibe I was getting from you at first was like when we first found blood, because we've been on this goose chase before. When you find blood, what type of blood is it? You know. And I remember back a few, uh, two years ago maybe even three years ago now we found blood immediately and you got super excited yeah. um and you this time were like hey, yeah hey, there's a lot of blood and you're like looking at me like oh, what and then that's when i point out the bubbles to you yeah. and then i'm like bubbles are good bubbles are a good sign in the blood yeah you can see it this time like the uh like macro bubbles micro bubbles uh, yeah we and anna was good about it i really was i stayed up in the tree stands uh, and then when Boom said he was getting down, uh, I had two cameras. One camera was within seven, eight yards of the impact shot, and I did not go and have a look. I didn't, because uh, I wanted to share that experience. Uh, as soon as Boom got there, again, I told him exactly. I took the last few steps of the deer, and instantly we found blood, and there was quite a lot of blood uh, from what we could see. What what was it? Sixty yard? No, seventy, eighty yards? Would you say? She, she went. I mean, she definitely went less than a hundred. Uh, that's for sure. Um, yeah, if you can go how we found her. Yeah, it followed it. We had a nice clean blood trail. Um, she hopped a small stream, uh, and she and then basically she was about ten yards on the other side of the stream. Uh, so we had to do a little bit of a picking. Pick and drag job, uh, and, and we made we, we've done a video about this, so you'll see that in the episode. But I, I got it, uh, and it was funny, you know, because you you talked about the, the job that I did. But I remember just before I got it, you asked how many deer are gutted now, you know, mm -hmm. and I said quite a few. Like mm -hmm. it's getting close to ten probably. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was happy with the comments because it's like. You know, you're supposed to get better, mm -hmm. you know, every time. I think, yeah. yeah, so to elaborate off that, and I think I said it in a video, um, but I'll say it on here too. So I've I've been fortunate where I've been on a lot of track jobs with deer, you know. Obviously, growing up in a hunting family, I got two younger brothers. Uh, and then in my adulthood, um, I've helped get a lot of friends into hunting. Um, or even if they were already in the hunting, maybe they weren't as experienced. So I get called, I get called to a lot of track jobs and I don't have a tracking dog or anything like that, but I would consider myself a above average tracker. I want to consult, I want to call myself an expert, but I would say above average. Um, and obviously then, you know, we do find a lot of deer and then it comes down to the gut jobs. So I've seen a lot of gut jobs. I was trained by three taxidermists to do gutting, um, so I'm fairly skilled at it. Uh, boy, I've seen some bad gut jobs or cleaning jobs. I've seen some bad ones, and I'm sitting there watching. And you know, and I expect, um, 
I should clarify when it, when I have a brand new hunter and I'm showing them how to get it. I expect it to be a messy job. I don't expect it to be good. My first one was a mess, um, but I've had guys before who are call themselves veterans hunters, and I'm watching them get this deer and I'm thinking, what in the hell are you doing? Um, and then and then if they're, you know, the, usually you know they're going either too crazy with it and we got guts everywhere, or they're so slow about it and so worried about making a mess and this and it's a messy job you know no matter how careful or whatever you are it's a messy job it is what it is so and i don't know if i've actually seen ryan gut a deer before i'm trying to think well you could, i did get you that um that speed what was what you call like the fast frame mm -hmm. picture of the oh yeah yeah property. yeah so yeah i've seen i guess i have seen it but i have not been there wow. have not been there while doing it and i just remember now this was like five to seven years ago talking to jesse the redneck um he said i asked him like how'd you guys do getting the deer and ryan had killed i think two that day and <laughs> jesse's i think exact words or something along the lines were like well we got the job done it wasn't pretty <laughs> but we got the job done um couldn't have said it better myself it, yeah so that's why i was i was impressed and just you can i mean you can see the seven years of growth 100 percent. not only in the hunting part but processing deer and then i mean i was i'm not gonna lie i was kind of studying so we had deer heart tonight and they were delicious uh we had ryan made us uh burritos deer venison burritos with uh chunked up deer heart in it and i'll be honest it's the first time i've had deer heart that way very good um i was watching your deer heart i first thing i thought you cooked it well number one and number two like i didn't see any big fatty pieces or anything like that yep it was good it was good yeah very enjoyable um yeah so i appreciated that uh, I, I, I mean i know you got probably some footage of it i thought it went pretty fast mm -hmm. yeah uh, you know several minutes you know once a family bang 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 it was done it was really clean uh, the inside looked great um got to use the four by four the quad for the first time got some blood on the quad so i know my brother it's been that. christened it has been christened no longer a virgin popped his cherry hey yo mm -hmm. um yeah i've done a nice photo shoot i'm i am pumped i boom's got some nice oh yeah we'll pull those up here in a little bit it'll be one of the pictures will be the thumbnail of this podcast okay yeah took some lovely photos uh, i felt like i was in high school you know them high school photographs <laughs> with my girlfriends sitting on the floor prom pictures like. mm. uh, yeah prom pictures so you were, so you were proud of this yeah I was, I was i was proud of this one <laughs> she, she, was, she was a looker uh, yeah i got some nice photos uh, done a little video interview uh, got her on the quad and then, and then brought her on out i think it was the easiest drag out uh, i've ever done in my entire life <laughs> but again what seven eight nine years of hunting you've got to put the grafting and you know we've been grafting and we picked up our skills and you know time to move on so we got a quad got it up ran into town got some ice uh, brought her back uh, put it in the cooler and loads of the the cavity with ice and that's it it'll she'll be going to the butchers tomorrow uh, getting my one of my favourites, one of my, my wife's favourites, uh, my brother's favourite, uh, venison bacon. We love it. Uh, John's processing in Elgin, Illinois, really good. He does good sausage, good bacon. Uh, so we'll be getting that as well, uh, and that'll be tomorrow. But we've got one more hunt tomorrow. If you wanna, yep, one more, more hunt. Song. We have a northeast wind. Um, I think I have my spot planned out. I'm going to go back to where we went tonight. Here's my logic to that. Um, obviously, we didn't have any luck there tonight. Uh, the wind's decent for it. Not great, but it's decent. Um, I think it's better. I think the wind's better for that spot compared to other stands. Uh, and then, in theory, they're going to be in the cornfield eating. And then... In the morning? In the morning, they'll be feeding tonight, ho hopefully, in theory. Um, and then... Because that's not, it's, so it's kind of weird. He's got he's got steaming corn, and then he's got wheat or beans who are all weedy and grown up. So I don't know if the deer are gonna prefer the beans or the corn or both. My in theory, and then to go off the beans is where the stand is. In theory, I will go sit in the stand. And I'll catch them coming back from feed, going into bedding. In my mind, that's how it's gonna go down. Um, so we'll see. Um, that and I just. 
Maybe it's because I also helped hang that stand, but I really like that spot. It, it just, it looks dairy. Looks like there should be deer. Um, and I figured give it a good, good old college try and uh, see if uh, see if I can get one done. And that, I mean, we saw a big buck there today. Well, Ryan did. And I'll be, I'll, um, you know, I didn't see it, but I trust Ryan's reaction. He says it's a big buck. I would shoot it. And then, uh, and then there was a doe too, so shoot that as well. I may go back to the same stand today. So the pattern that I've sort of like developed over on this farm over the past three years, I call it the three day pattern. Uh, and what we've noticed is that, you know, one night, one day and night, I'll get a ton of pictures. I mean, I showed the guys last week here, uh, you know, one trail cam photo of four different books of all different stages on the one photograph. So I'll get a day where it'll be pounded, but then I'll get the next two days where it's, it's sort of quiet. Now these last two days I've had barely any mm -hmm. uh, photographs so in theory with the three day rule tomorrow should be a good day for it. Uh, wind's looking good, temperature's looking good, uh, it was a clear day, it was a lovely sit today, I, like I enjoyed both sits. Mm -hmm. uh, the afternoon, we got out early, we, we knew we got out early but again we want to make the most of our time and when we got out there it was, it was roast and it was almost unbearable like... I was this close to be like, man, I need to get out of this stand and light <laughs> some shade or something. Uh, but we stayed out there, and then, you know, as we predicted, as soon as the sun went over the tops of the, um, over them trees, it cooled down straight away. And, and that word that you said, it's dairy. I, I couldn't agree more, because it mm -hmm. was, tonight was dairy. And I was just blown away that we didn't yeah, see it. Just no dairy. <laughs> or other than the two. Yeah, so... Uh, so uh, yeah, we're we'll going to harvest tomorrow. I think that'll be a re I think that's a really good choice. Made up. I got to do a double hunt with you today. Uh, shame again that there just wasn't deer in that. We, we probably did too much laughing. Today. Oh my god! There was sort of some good videos about that. I'm excited to see what you're going to do. Yeah. There was one point where we were laughing so hard the tree stand was like this. So on the GoPro, the GoPro is probably going to be like this, like a fairground ride or something. But. Holy smokes, man! Yeah, great idea. That was Boom's suggestion, by the way, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, enjoyed every minute of it, except for not seeing a deer. Like, mm -hmm. or at least getting an opportunity to see a deer. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, I'll probably go back to the same stand that was today. There's two options. There's what we call my stand and what we call our ashes stand. Um, yeah. I might go to our ashes, so you might just drop me off, and then you take the quad uh, up top. That'd be fine. And then do it that way. Um, keep each other updated how we're getting on. Say so I don't either that way, or uh, if you want the quad, you can drop me off at the creek or something. Well, you might as well take it. You're further yes. away. Don't bother me. Well, well, hold on a sec. Well, we can talk off camera. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about leave and time. Mm -hmm. uh, because remember what I said to our Ash last time, I was getting out the stands an hour early mm -hmm. to come back up and set mm -hmm. down camp. So maybe we can do something like that tomorrow, give you that extra hour, yeah. and I can come back and set down the tent and that. Yeah, we can talk off camera about it. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Give you the, give you the most, most amount of time in the field. But, yeah, uh... Yeah, so I know it's kind of short and sweet. Um, well, let me ask you one thing before before we finish. Mm -hmm. it. Have you enjoyed your time? Because this is your first time. Oh right? yeah, I've, so I kind of knew. Uh, going in. Uh, I knew going into this. Uh, I thought the first thing I had a good chance, uh, good chance of killing a deer. Obviously, um, Jesse and Ryan have been keeping me updated with pictures the whole time. Um, so I knew I had a good chance of killing a deer. Uh, but I mainly knew like come down here is gonna be a good time. We're gonna have a lot of laughs and I and I did believe and still believe That we were going to kill at least one if not two deer um, And just have a good time doing it and I knew it'd be good content. <laughs> I knew uh, it's always good content when uh, you and Jesse are involved uh, And obviously uh, that's the name of the game trying to get this brand it's content 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 um so i knew we were gonna have a good time and honestly i uh 
I was just ready to start hunting season, and I thought, what's a better way to start it off is get away for a while. You know, it's just a day and a half for me, you know, <laughs> um, day and a half, get away, uh, kind of reset, and go back to work and just family life and then hunting at home with a fresh mindset um and that's and that's already been achieved in my mind and uh and obviously obviously when it comes to content um getting one down morning one october 1st that's great i mean there's been a couple uh seasons where we didn't get anything down until november um so it is that's, that's, that's been most of my season since the start of mm -hmm. so so it feels good. Um, it feels good to get that, and and that and I already know. So if you guys paid attention last year, kind of what I did is I do vlogs, um, and then I'm gonna keep doing that. We'll do basic vlogs, uh, either weekly or bi-weekly. Just kind of depends on how the hunts go. Um, and this will be so this will come out either end of this week or early next week is my plan. Um, real short, limited edits. Just get just get it out there. Uh, but then at the end of the year, I'll put a I put a polished film together. Um, you know, anywhere between 30, 30 to twenty minutes. Uh, I try to go twenty minutes. Um, I'm even okay if it's a little less. But uh, I do polish. Like last year, I did Breaker of the Mold series. Um, I, I was pretty happy with my work last year with it. Um, especially with my you know teach. I'm just DIY. You know, doing it myself when it comes to the editing. So yeah. So I pretty much already know. Um, I have one episode for whatever I name the series. I don't know what I'm going to name the series yet or anything like that. But, uh, you know, I know I got at least one episode for that. And we'll, we'll go from there. Mold is at the mold. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was an enjoyable series. That mm -hmm. was I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's going to get to down to like 46 tonight, I think it is. 45, something like that. Uh, we both are in cots in this tent, and uh, yeah, I don't really have much more to say. You got anything? That's it. All right, guys. So far, one more morning to go, and that's tomorrow. We uh, damn straight. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for listening, to this guys. This has been the Thin Blue Lion Outdoors Podcast, episode forty six from the field. Uh, we're gonna keep turning these podcasts. Try to do weekly for you. Uh, we're gonna have more updates in the field. Uh, we're gonna start a new segment, uh, the hunting grind. Watch that TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Shorts, all about hunting and coffee. Why? Because I like coffee and I need an excuse to drink it. That's why we're starting this. Uh, and hopefully here soon I'll have the merch again. I know I'm slacking again. Get working, the I'm merch. Working on it. I'm Everyone working on wants it. the merch. I'm working on it, boys and girls. All right, guys, have a good one. Be safe out there. Peace out, guys. Have a good season.